good morning, y'all. How y'all doing today? Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad y'all so excited. <laughs> good morning and welcome to Life Spring. We're so glad you're here today. I'm excited about being in the house of God today. Amen. Come on. Y'all be excited. Oh, yeah. So, so, so listen, I, I, I'm on a mission, man. It's summer. Come on. So, a couple of quick announcements. Hey, do not forget to uh, check in today. If, if you have the app, go on and stop and check in. Let us know you're here so that we can connect with you. If you are a first-time guest, go on and scan. Or if you've never got our app, go on and scan the little QR code. It'll work from your chair. I promise it will. Scan and get our app, and uh, you can offer up prayer requests or praise reports. You can get the app through that website if you don't have it. And then you can also see what we got coming up. So, so we're excited because we're on the Summer Adventure Tour. Come on. So a so couple of things going on on the calendar. Amplify group tonight, 6 o'clock at the church. So if you're 18 to 25 and you need something to do, come hang out tonight with the Amplify group here at the church as they grow and connect together in the Lord. And then our adventure continues Tuesday night. Look at your neighbor and say Tuesday night. Tuesday night, Tuesday night is game night. Family game night. Oh, you don't want to miss. You might want to bring your hat, too, because I got a little sweaty the other night. <laughs> but, man, we had some fun. You don't, you don't want to miss the opportunity to come play a game with your family. Dinner is provided. So I, we just gave you free entertainment and free dinner. Come, come on. I had a good time. We, we played a little uh, hopscotch and yardsy. I managed to get Yardsy. What's Yardsy? That was Yahtzee with a five-gallon bucket and some four-by-fours. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. I told y'all I was going to win. That's faulty scorekeeping. Malicious lies. That's faulty scorekeeping. So y'all don't want to miss game night Tuesday night. Food, fellowship, some fun. And, and that's for everybody in the whole family. Infants to 105. Come, come on, bring everybody out and come have some fun, have some dinner. Man, that food was actually pretty good, too. Hey, man, I had a blast. So I don't know why she got up her sleeve this week. We'll find out. All right, and then Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. Kingdom Seekers, VBS, Vacation Bible School. It, it, Infants through fifth grade, we seek in the kingdom. We, we got our safari hats. We, we got our scars in case we get bloody and we can wrap ourselves up. We're super, super excited about seeking the kingdom. So that's Friday night. Dinner is at 630, so bring the fam and eat again. Wednesday, what did I say? Yeah, you come Friday too. We may not be here though. <laughs> Wednesday night, kingdom seekers, uh, Adventure, VBS, dinner, 6.30. The adults can eat too. Come on through. Have a blast. Go check out the room. We got the whole safari thing going on back there. We're seeking first the kingdom of heaven so that all these things can be added unto us. Amen? So we're just having a blast with kingdom seekers. All right. Then last but not least, baptism. If you're on the app, there's a link that says sign up for baptism right there on that front page when you scan that. That is going to be June 30th. That's also going to be our closeout for VBS. So we got some special things hooked up for you at the end as we close out Vacation Bible School that Sunday. We're just going to celebrate and party. And the kids got something cooked up for y'all. So we're super excited about adventuring for the month of June. Well, I'm glad y'all excited. Hallelujah. I, I, I get it. It's them folks online, and I understand. So if you're, I, I love Andy Griffith, and I recognize that some of you are like the darlings, the boys, y'all all keyed up. <laughs> I understand that some of y'all are like the darling boys. You're all keyed up, and it's okay. Contain yourself as we get ready to adventure this summer. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank y'all. I love y'all. I'm super excited about this summer. I'm, I'm ready for an adventure. How many of y'all ready for an adventure? Because you know I've discovered something. Every day is an adventure with Jesus. Every day is a new day. And it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood if you choose to make it that. How many of y'all ready for this beautiful message from the pastor today? Come on, pastor, bring us a word. Amen. Somebody say, get excited. Now, 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 really mean to do it. Get excited. See, sometimes you got to get excited on purpose. Amen. Good morning. I got one of those messages today that's kind of, uh-oh, and everybody said, y'all know how they are. We're on part two of fear not. Look at your neighbor and say, fear not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next Sunday is Father's Day. I said, next Sunday's Father's Day. Everybody bring a father. It don't matter if it's yours or the neighbor's, your cousin's father, or whoever's father it may be. Bring your father. I got a message for you, Father's Day. Amen. Hallelujah. And Tuesday night, come on out. Fellowship with us. We had a great time. Let me tell you what happened for me Tuesday night. I, I had the uh, opportunity, because I don't always have and afforded this opportunity, to fellowship and get to know some of the church members that I don't get to, to talk to on a regular. Come on. And, and, and so that is an awesome time to fellowship. Our kids had a great time. Uh, Jonathan, I, I tell you, I, I think he's still 12. Oh, yeah, he went out. So, oh, he just come in. And, uh, We're talking about nobody, Jonathan. We had a great time, fellowship. So come on out and fellowship with us Tuesday. We would love it. Hallelujah. I, I got, before I can preach this, I have, to, I have to make a confession. Is it okay to be real at church? No, I mean, really, is it really real? Is it okay to be real at church? It, you know, our problem is, is we got this perceived idea that church is that place that where everybody walks in is holy. That's not so. So I, I do have, can you handle a, profession, a confession from your, your pastor this morning? Okay. I, I'm a recovering people pleaser. Can anybody relate with me? Come on. Oh, so the rest of you that didn't raise your hands, you're still a people pleaser, right? I'm recovering. Come on. Because we have to sometimes, we have to understand that what our motives in life are, and we got to understand what's, what's going on to create the atmosphere that we live in. And I must admit, spent most of my life trying to please people. I threw my suits down and I threw my pleasing people down. That don't mean I go and hurt people and say, it don't matter because it does matter. Come on. But when we focus and hyper-focus on fitting in, come on young people, I need you to hear me today. Or, you know, when we say the right thing, and, and, and that was always my concern as a pastor because I know what comes to my mind usually just comes out of my mouth, and, and that ain't always the best thing to say. That's why I have to be really prayed up to get up here before you because uh, if, I let, if my mind, my mouth open as my mind opens, we're in trouble. Come on. Uh, you know, if we hyper-focus on having the right friends, now I'm going to talk about a generation because what about the right clothes if we don't have the right clothes? The right name brand. Come on. 
See, see, I remember when my kids were growing up, it was BKs. None of y'all understand BKs, I know, but because that's so old long ago. Yeah, I see some of y'all going, British Knights. Yeah, it, you had to have British Knights or you wasn't cool. Worried about fitting in. I told my, we are Knights. Why do you need British Knights? We American Knights. Say, Come on, y'all. <laughs> but we do. I mean, if it ain't polo, and then if it's, it, watch, we get polo. I, I remember having a the, the next best thing, the fake polo called Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> Come on. Always worrying about what somebody else is going to think. What people are thinking about you. Can I tell you something? Right, wrong, or indifferent, young people hear me. This right today, you need to hear this down in your very fabric of your soul. That they going to talk about you anyway. And the church said. So during this season of life, as we're growing together, we're going we're gonna to look at some events that took place again, in Mary and Joseph's life and what they must have been thinking because three times the angel came. Three times the angel said, fear not or do not be afraid, depending on the translation you read. So today we're going to look at a portion of the story and what the angel's message was that can help us overcome our fear of what people think. Come on. Have you ever had a preconceived idea about somebody and then to get to know them and you find out it wasn't true? I, I, I'm asking. I mean, that's, it's, it's a vital question because, be honest with you, a lot of times we get a preconceived idea of, of somebody and, and then we find out at the end of the day it wasn't even true. So, so I want to throw this out at you today, if it's okay with you. When, when, if you're taking notes, it's a great place to start. Obsessing about what people think about you is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about you. Obsessing about what people think about you is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about you. Come on. Because what happens is we, we find ourselves worrying if we can live up to their expectations. Come on. We, we do that. I mean, uh, we, we put that pressure on our children. You got to go to college, get a good education in order to live a good, prosperous life. Well, that's all good unless you leave God out of it. And the church said. See, so we teach our children to, that they need to learn to say the right thing. Come on. Drive the right car and in, post the right things. Y'all help me. Listen, parents, your children would rather you show up in a $5,000 automobile to all their events than to show up every once in a while in an $80,000 Mercedes. They don't want your car. They want you. And the church says, hallelujah. My, my, my prayer today that God does a deep work in our hearts. How, how does God do a deep work in our hearts? First, open your spiritual ear and let God minister to you. And everybody said. So in Matthew 1, if you'll turn there with me. We're going to talk about a guy named Joseph. He has a massive decision to make. A massive decision to make. He, he has a decision to make between what is easy or what is right. Y'all with me? How many of you ever noticed that what's right is rarely easy? I said, what's right is rarely easy. Come on. We know it's not right to gossip, but it's so much more fun to gossip. Amen? 
the church said, right? <laughs> we know it's right to resist temptation, but it's easy to eat it anyway. Come on. How many of y'all, I'm that one that if I go to, to, to shopping with you, and they have these toys out that says, try me, I'll go through and push all the buttons. <laughs> Knowing I shouldn't do that. I got caught by a church member one time. <laughs> they were on the aisle, I'm over here, just boop, boop, boop. <laughs> and I walked around, with, oh, Lord, y'all help me. Y'all pray for me, I'm not perfect. Mm. But watch, here we are. Joseph is engaged to be married to Mary. See, engagement back then was nothing like we have today. Engagement back then was pretty much like being married today. You made a vow one to another. A amen? Come on. So here Joseph is engaged. And now, he's trying to figure a way out. Have you ever been in those tough situations where you, you know, darned if you do and darned if you don't? Well, see, he's kind of in this situation because, see, marriage back then was death till we part. Amen. They either died or you could divorce. But do you know that a fiancé, if they didn't go through with the marriage, was considered a widow. Y'all with me? Matthew 1 and 18, he says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Watch. Even though they were engaged, Joseph knew this was not his child. They had not yet consummated a marriage. He knew that he had not been with her. No possible way was this his child. I got to ask you a question. Imagine in your own mind how, he, how you would have thought, how you would have felt, how, how you would have reacted to that. Can I give you some South Georgia on that? Girl, you have lost your mind. You coming off with some kind of story like the Holy Ghost did. What? You're a little too spiritual for me, baby, because uh -uh, I ain't buying that stuff. I knew, I saw the other day when you was down at the well, and that old boy come over there with that muscle shirt on, checking you out. Don't, don't come off with that hype. Who do you think you are? Come on. And here Mary is, baby, don't worry. Listen, the angel of the Lord said it's going to be okay. Really, I promise you, it's going to be all right. I, I got to say, I'm sure Joseph in his all and his infinite wisdom going, look, girl, this ain't a time for all this. I don't care what that angel said. The angel ain't talked to me. Oh, not yet. <laughs> so from a human perspective, he only had two options. Because now, in his own mind, he had already created a preconceived idea that she's a liar and she's crazy. She cray-cray <laughs> and she's a cheater. Come on, y'all. <laughs> So, so I mean, that's his preconceived. What would you think? Same thing. Come on. Now Joseph has to question, can I even trust her or believe her? How can I be married to somebody I don't trust? Y'all help me. So, so my question is, what would you do next? Let's see what he did. Our human brain is, is set up to where we're going to this right here. And if we're not careful, this right here will destroy every blessing that God wants to bless you with. 
Here God spoke to her and told her, be not afraid because that that you are conceived with is of the Holy Ghost. She heard from God. He hadn't yet. And I'm going to be honest with you. When you're, when you're in your flesh, it's hard to hear from God. I said, when you're in your flesh, because now he has to question a whole lot of stuff that's going on. He started here, what would people think about me? Now, I'm fixing to be marked for life. See, because times back then wasn't like they are today. Come on. I mean, y'all think it's bad living in the little city of Albany? Everybody knows your business? Back then, they talked openly in front of you. Y'all with me? Hmm. Joseph had to be thinking, no one's going to believe me. Come on. They're going to say we have a, a, a scandal going on here. And let's think about Mary. She's going to be an outcast. How in the world can Joseph marry Mary knowing that she is going to be an outcast? Let's even go deeper than that. You know he had to be thinking, uh, I'm not even going to be employable no more. Nobody's even going to do business with me. So now I'm going to be broke, outcasted from society. Have no career. And our parents are not even going to bless this marriage. Back then was a big deal. The, husband, the, the, the man would always get blessing from daddy before they married. It was important. Come on. And then this child... God only knows who this child belongs to. It's going to be mocked its whole life. Marked and deemed as a bastard child. Uh-oh, the pastor preached, cussed in church. No, that's in the Bible. Bastard means fatherless. Don't know who the father is. Out of wedlock. Because they weren't married. So what was, what, where would your state of mind be at that point? Come on. I, I'm going to show you where his mind was. His mind was that, his state of mind was, he's bailing on this relationship. Deuces, baby. <laughs> you had your chance, girl. You have blown it. We find this in verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Well, wait a minute. How can they get a divorce? They're not married. Because they were. They were engaged. You had to divorce. See, engagement wasn't just, well, I'm, if everything works out good, me and you hick, we, we good, we, gonna, we get married. No, no, no. When you, when you got engaged, it's like being married today. You went into a written contract. And everybody said so, so he does the noble thing, and he's wanting to divorce her quietly because he didn't want to shame her. I mean, see, that's our problem today. When we get mad at somebody, we want to rip them apart and tear them down. And, and he's like, no, I can't do this to Mary because, you know, really, I would have never got into a covenant of marriage with her if I didn't love her. Some of you need to go back to, ooh, yes, Lord, to where you first started in your relationship and find what it was that you love so much and rekindle that. That's for somebody. But he was going to do everything quietly. And in his own mind, he had to be thinking that, well, now I can start over. Look here. Maybe, just maybe, I can save my reputation. And you say, well... Pastor, that's not, his reputation is hers. No, that's where we kind of changed everything today, is his re reputation as well. See, see, husband, wife, 
what you do reflects on the one that you're married to. I said the one, what you do reflects on the one you're married to. Let's say that again. It's worth repeating. What you do reflects on the one that you're married to. And the church said, but watch. He's like, maybe I can find me somebody else and, and I can get rid of all of this. But he's, he is about to learn one of life's most important lessons in life. Joseph is. And this is this. Pleasing God often means disappointing people. Pleasing God often disappoints, leads to disappointing people. Verse 20, he says, but after Joseph had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said. So now, God's got his attention. Some of y'all wondering where God's at. He's been speaking to you, but you're so busy with everything else that, that you hadn't took time to let God talk to you. And David, with, it, with Joseph, with everything going on, now he has to, he has to get it. God has to wait till he's asleep to where he can come to him in a dream because now life is chaotic. Anybody got chaos in your life right now? Come on, y'all. <laughs> he says, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Can I ask you a question? Does that make it any different of what people are going to say and think about your situation? Not at all. But how would you like to know that Jesus entrust, uh, God entrusted you to give birth to Jesus, the Savior of this world? We say, oh, that would be awesome, Pastor. That would be great. Well, listen, God has entrusted you with his power and his blood and his name. And he's saying, I, I'm entrusting you. But watch, people will talk about you. I'll get there in a minute. Mm. Watch this. If you're taking notes. Obsessing about what people think about you is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about you. Watch this. Obsessing about what God thinks about you is the quickest way to forget what people think about you. And the church said... Hallelujah. So, so how do we live for God instead of people in this day? Come on. We have to think about how God used Mary and Joseph in this situation. I mean, if it wasn't for Mary and Joseph, I'm sure God would have found another way because he's omni. Present, he's all powerful and all knowing. But because Joseph finally said, I give in. Absolutely. Come on. And went through hell to get there. Some of you right now are going through some stuff and you're wondering where God's at. God is setting you up to grow you up. God is setting you in a place that, that he can make growth in your life. And the church said, and now they give birth to the sinless son of God that became the ransom for you and me. Can you imagine the grief that they caught in their community? Oh, I'm not even going to get deeper with that on you. The grief that they caught with all them hens in the hen house talking trash about them. They go to the synagogue to worship, and they're over there whispering. Look at them over there. Who's that, thing you are? that ain't even Joseph's kid. I don't know who she thinks she is. She's trying to lie to him, and he believed it. And I don't understand. I know he said he's already he heard from God, but but you know how people are. They just they make up whatever they want to make up just so they can say they done whatever, so they can go about their business. So all this grief came to a place that when Jesus was born, was baptized in the Jordan, then he came back to his hometown, and the Bible says he couldn't even heal none, because why? They lost respect because they knew they had been talking about the Messiah, the Son of God. Y'all with me? Y'all 
Y'all with me? They, you know they talked about him. Y'all know they gossiped about him. I know she's, I, I did the math. No way. Come on. They had to be pregnant before they got married. So, come on, y'all. If you're taking notes, if you're not ready to be criticized for your obedience to God, you're not ready for God to, to be used by God. If you're not ready to be criticized for your obedience to God, you're not ready to be used by God. I love what Paul says in Galatians 1 and 10. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my, go my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Come on. Going, like going public, listen to young people, going public with your faith. Come on. You know, like when we get baptized, we're, we're doing an, an outward appearance of an inward work in our life. Y'all help me. Taking a stand for Christ at school. I, I know some young people won't even wear a Christian shirt because they're afraid that they're going to get the ridicule from church. Oh, you're one of them people. They won't even pray over their meal because they're afraid of ridic being ridiculed. Now, I'm going to tell a, a personal story that happened in my own life. I remember right, right not long after I got saved, and I'm going to refrain from this, this comment because um, some people take it offensive. Well, you know what? It don't matter. I'm going to offend you anyway. Um, when I got saved, I got so saved that you couldn't change my mind. God did a radical work in my life because I had came to a place that, God, either you're real or I'm checking out of here. Life, as I knew it, was miserable. So, watch. If I'm worshiping crazy, just ignore me or talk about me, make fun of me. It don't matter to me. But I lived next door to this guy, and him and I, we built race cars together. And... I love fast, loud, and in order to be fast and loud, you have to spend money. Fast, loud, power doesn't come cheap. And so we needed a particular part to go on the car. And I'd been going to church a little while. And I kind of refrained from going over there because every other word coming out of his mouth was a cuss word, which was mine too at the time. I was saved going to heaven, but I still cussed. I ain't, I ain't, y'all say y'all can't handle real around here. And, and I remember going over there, and, and he said, well, we need $1,100 to buy this part. Brother, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't do that right now. I hadn't saved up enough she money. See, see, some of y'all don't even know what she money is. That's money she didn't know I had. I, I didn't have enough she money hid yet to, to help pay my half. Here was the comment. Actually, it was a dividing comment. It cut to the sunder. I had to make a choice. Am I going to make a stand for God or am I going to make a stand for the world? He said, well, if you, ever since you started going to that church down there, You've done changed. Yeah, I'm not cussing near as much as I used to. And he said, you used to always have plenty of money. But I understand you giving that church about $500 a week down there. I stopped him in his tracks. And I said, I can't wait till the day I do. He didn't, make no, he didn't mean no didn't even understand what I'm saying. If that's the case, then I'm making 5000 a week. Absolutely. I, I'm gladly, gladly paying my tithes on 5000 a week. I said, well, if, you, if you're referring to the fact that I pay, uh, pay God my tithe, then you're absolutely correct. And you know what? I'm probably not going to be your neighbor very long because I'm up out of here. 
guess what? Less than a year, I was moving on. Come on. I said, I'm moving on. Why? Because God exalted. But I took a stand, and I didn't care. And now, this was one of my best friends, y'all. I mean, me and him were hangout brothers. We were, we were thick as thieves. But I'm sorry. By now, you couldn't change my mind. See, see, he wasn't there on that couch when I knelt down in withdrawals and said, God, if you're real. He wasn't there when God saved my life. He wasn't there. So at that point, I didn't care. Young people, here, listen to me. People will come and people will go. People will come in your life and they'll leave your life. Your problem of worrying about what they think about you, you are crazy. So now let me tell you the rest of the story. Several years later, you know me, the crazy one, because, you know, I started going to that church down there. They brainwashed me, and now I'm not the same person no more. I don't dress like that no more. I don't act like that no more. I'm giving the church all my money and all of those things. And, yeah, I mean, I mean, I had a car. I had to come home every afternoon and work on it so I could go to work the next day. Living paycheck to paycheck and in credit card debt up to here. And that was all good. That's where people want to keep you. God says, I want to elevate you. So now I get a phone call many years later. It's mighty funny how they'll remember you when he gets the, the diagnosis back, he's got bone cancer. So now I get the privilege to lead him to the Lord, baptize him, and do his home going. Who did he call? The crazy one. Who did he call? The one that lost their mind. Who did he call? The one he talked about. Who did he call? The one he badgered and beat up. Who do they ever, when do they ever call? When they know that they know. Y'all with me? See, some of you sitting in this place today and that is watching by live stream, you don't worship freely because you're worried about what somebody's going to think about you. Can you listen to me today? Kick off your I don't care shoes and get in the presence of God. It is, watch, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's waiting on you. But yet, we have a hard time going public with our faith. Come on. Some of us get in situations where we can make a little more money or a lot more money, but it won't honor God. Don't do the deal. Come on. Some of you young people, you're going to get it talked about because you don't go to the party. That everybody else is going to because you don't drink and you don't do drugs. And you are saving yourself for marriage. And you don't listen to some, some of the music that other people listen to. Y'all help me. They're going to talk about you. Oh, let them talk about you the whole time while you got peace. While you got joy. Talk about me all you want to. I have a peace down inside me. And that peace is, is when I leave here, I'm going to be standing present with the Lord. Listen. Mm, hallelujah. If you're not ready to be criticized for your obedience to God, you're not ready to be used by God. You're going to have to take some criticism. That your family is going to talk about you. Those folk you work with are going to talk about you. Your best friend may walk away from you. But can I tell you something? He said, I'll never leave you. Nor will I ever forsake you. I will never leave you bread and bread. I will be your way maker. He will be your anchor in the middle of a storm. Y'all with me today? So if you're not ready to be criticized for your obedience to God, then you're not ready to be used by God. Come on. If you're taking notes, extraordinary acts of God often starts with, starts with ordinary acts of obedience. 
I, I love this statement. How many of you know he says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. That men shall give into your bosom. Prove me in this, for I will open you the window of heaven and pour you out blessings that you cannot contain. Amen? We all know that, right? We read that. Obedience unlocks the windows. Disobedience locks the windows. And the church said, two teenagers had no idea of what they were fixing to do when they said yes to God. They were bringing in this world the Savior that they had been praying for for decades and decades and decades. They were bringing and birthing in the Savior of this world. Come on. I don't know about you, but when God tells me something, I, I, I want God to give me all of the details. I'm into the details. Give me the details. Now, how am I going to go about this? God, how am I going to fund this? How am I going to do this? And how am I going to do that? And listen, God says, I can't give you all the details because you can't handle the details. You will handle it wrong. He'll give you one and two, step one and step two, and we're wanting step ten. And he's saying, I can't give you step ten because you ain't even obeying step one and two. Y'all with me today? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Psalms 119 and 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. We're trying to get step 10, 12, 14, and God's still trying to get us to be obedient to step one and two. And he says that his word will lead you. You can't separate God from his word. Y'all with me? But he needs us to be obedient. Here, here, here Joseph and Mary, that, I don't know about you, but if I was in Joseph's place, fear Stricken, I promise you. There, is there nobody sitting in here under the sound of my voice or watching my live stream that at some point in your life you weren't fear struck? This could be the end. This could be the one right here, baby. This could be the one. I mean, and I ain't talking about Fred Sanford. This is the big one, Elizabeth. I, I, this could be the one. This right here could be the one. And how did they handle it? They handled it in obedience to God. And everybody said, probably one of the number one things that we hear in America today, people are fearful of the economy. That they're fearful of the, of, of the presidency and, and the, the direction our country's going in. We're fearful of the next generation. When we need to be fearful of a loving God that loved us enough to entrust us with his word. And we should fear him, not in I'm afraid as much as it is I reverence a God. And everybody said, hallelujah. If that was the case, we wouldn't spend all of our money and get so far in debt to impress people. We're buying cars that we can't afford. Wearing clothes that we can't afford. We're trying, watch, even better, worse than this, you, some of you in college try to get a degree that you don't even want. You ain't even wanting to go that way. But you are trying to please mom and daddy. Some of you in, are right now in compromising relationships. Nope. Oh. Pastor's going to get loud now. In compromising relationships and sexually active, trying to win somebody's love. You will never win somebody's love. You can't buy it. You can't sleep it. You can't. Mm. Love is love. Love can't, has no names. We can't. Watch. We can't even our own self. Our own self, we can't control who we fall in love with. And the church said, 
a lot of times we'll get in a situation around people and we'll hide our faith so people will like you and they'll be themselves around you. That was always a weird one for me. I've heard it so many times over these last 23 years. Oh, here comes the pastor. Here comes the pastor. Here comes the and I tell y'all, when I go out with you, don't, don't introduce me as your pastor. I'm your pastor right now. I don't want nobody to change because of my title. I want somebody to change because Jesus reached down in them and, and made an adjustment in them. And not because of who I am. Because that ain't nothing but just a facade. Y'all ain't with me. Mm. I don't know about you, but it's time that the church realize we don't have to fear the coming. We don't have to fear what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen with the stock market? What's going to happen with this? What if everything crumbles? Can I tell you something? If everything crashes and everything goes away, Jesus is still Lord and he's still coming back for a body of believers that's looking for his coming and your peace don't ride in how many zeros you got in your banking account. Some of y'all say, well, it does mine because that's all I got is zeros. Come on, y'all. So what if God prompted you, prompted you to make that phone call or invite that person to church? Watch. I'll never forget. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go here. I remember I invited some guys that worked with us. I never dreamed they would show up. Okay. I, I, was, I wasn't even officially a greeter at our church. But I greeted everybody. I was handed bulletins early on and told them that's what I was supposed to do. And I didn't like people. I didn't know God was using that to fix something in me. All right. So, so here I am. I'm not the official greeter. But I am a, I'm greeting. I walk around through the sanctuary talking to everybody, hugging on everybody. Y'all come on down. Let's worship. And, and man, boy, God was doing great and mighty things. And. And so I invited these guys that worked with me. I, again, I did not know they would show up. They were from a different denomination. We had folks laid out in the spirit, folks running with flags and and shouting and, and just praising God. They're standing over here going, They thought, you would have thought they were in a bar fight. And they were backing up against the wall. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all laughing too much. And, and, they're, and they're looking around. They're like, oh, Jesus. What have I got into? Let me tell you what I found myself doing. The opposite of what I normally do. I found myself not worshiping like I normally worship. And I found myself not being as friendly and, and talking to everybody because now I'm sitting there the whole time worrying, fearing what I was going to hear the next day at work. I'm robbing myself of worship. Worried about the thoughts and the approval of people. Not knowing that these Jokers here, God was on them. That one says, man, I was raised a certain denomination my whole entire life. And this lady beside me was speaking in tongues. I said, oh, there was about 50, 100, 200 behind you. They were still, they were all speaking in tongues. But it, nevertheless, at the end of the day, I never felt nothing like I felt and that joker came to our church and never left. Why? Because it's the presence of God. But it's because I was bold enough to share my faith and invite. Some of y'all got family and friends that you should be inviting to church that you're not because you're afraid what they're going to think. Don't quit worrying about what they think. Let them think about what God thinks. Somebody say amen. Sometimes we got to get bold. 
Young people, you're going to have to learn to get bold at school. Work. What if, what if God was speaking to you to, to speak to that one student at, at school? We've seen so many this past year that died. You might have been that last hope they had before they died. Amen? <clears throat> Maybe God's dealing with you about forgiving somebody that has hurt you so deep. Are you willing? Or maybe just God didn't want you to start tithing. Hello? Crickets. Wait. <laughs> Come on. Listen, God may be dealing with somebody in here to, or online. It's online, I'm sure, not here. Online. To foster a child. Will you? Extraordinary acts of God often start. With ordinary acts of obedience. Amen? Watch, my aunt for decades kept telling me, I'll see you Sunday. I'll see you Sunday. Yeah, I know you will when you come to pick my kids up, take them to church. Hallelujah. Her act of obedience. And everybody said. So what if Joseph would have said no? Come on. But he didn't. You know why he didn't? Because he valued the heart of God above the opinions of man. Come on. Matthew 124. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Amen. Somebody put a period right behind that. He was obedient. Look at your neighbor and say, he was obedient. Now look at your other neighbor and say, are you? Are you obedient to God when God speaks to you? So obsessing about what people think about you is the quickest way to forget what God thinks about you. But obsessing about what God thinks about you is the quickest way to forget what people think about you. I'm going to close with that. When we realize what God really thinks about us, and how God feels about us. And we will meditate on that. It doesn't matter what somebody else says about you. It doesn't matter how somebody else may see you. Because I have learned in life. Some people have preconceived ideas. And don't even know the truth about nothing. And, and it's okay. They, they already think you're this. And in, the, in their mind, they have made their mind up. And it's okay. It's not your place to go change their mind. Your job is to serve God, be obedient to God, and let God fix the rest. And the church said, well, he ain't nothing, ain't won't never be nothing. Who does he think he is? Let me tell you who you are today. If you'll stand to your feet, I'll tell you. You are a child of the Most High God. You are above and not beneath. You're more than a conqueror, and everything you put your hands to shall prosper. And everywhere you put the soles of your feet, you have power and you have dominion. Why? Because you are a chosen child of the King of Kings and of the Lord of Lords. It don't matter what nobody else says. It don't matter. Oh, yes, and I will go here. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I don't know who I'm talking to. Just because you get saved doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. Some of you right now are in here that are are watching by live stream you've made some mistakes and the mistakes are eating you up because you're going what does people think about me it don't matter what people think about you it's being pleasing in the sight of God and the awesome thing about serving God is, is repentance brings on salvation repentance means that I can wash this away I can get under the shower of grace and grab the bar of soap of the Holy Spirit and wash all of this away
And then when it's brought up again, God will say, I don't know what you're talking about. Why do you keep bringing up something I done forgave you of? Why do you keep bringing up things that I have cast as far as the east is from the west? I don't know who needs to hear this today. You need to let go and let God. Let go and let God. One little act of obedience this morning. I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody today. You, you've allowed the enemy to keep you hostage to something that you've overcome a long time ago. When God says, I've already forgiven you. Now, take a bath in grace. Get the, get the perfume of the anointing on and walk out this call I have for you. Hallelujah. He said, I want to turn everything wrong right. Just because you made a mistake don't mean God holds it against you. He's not people. People will always hold your past against you. God says, I've forgiven your past. I've given you pre- forgiven your present. And I'm standing here today on this platform to tell you that God loves you unconditionally but he says you've got to do one thing and that means you're going to have to repent that don't mean just to say I'm sorry that means to turn from that way and the church said so Father I lift up your people today I pray that they'll attune their ear to your voice and God I ask right now for your presence to fill their hearts, to fill their lives, to change their family. Help us all to be obedient to you in all our ways. And Father, as we stand before you, that we may hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. No matter what the family says, no matter what our friends say, no matter what our co-workers say, no matter what nobody else in this world says, we want to hear from you. Well done. Father, for all those that are hanging on to something in the past, Holy Spirit, sick them in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and the glory. And everybody said, amen. If that's for you, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I love you. We'll see you Tuesday night, 6.30, correct? Come on out and fellowship with us. And they're going to worship us out of here. I love you.